and welcome back to Portimao on the Algarve coast in Portugal. We've had three races here today and it's time to get set for the last event on Monday. It's time for the FIM CEV Repsol Moto2 European Championship riders to do business once again around this 4.5 kilometer circuit. Yari Montea made it three wins from three earlier on today and he's looking in pretty imperious form to repeat that again. Nicky Tooley was second for the third straight row. Can he take first? My name's Elliot York. Alongside me is Jack Gorson. We're going to bring you the last race of the day from this glorious setting. A nice little slow-mo shot through the gravel, looking over the circuit and into the mountains in the background. The riders are already taking their formations on the grid. Yep, we just see them coming down in front of our commentary box position here. Just watch the 54 of Fermin Aldegur, the top stock 600 rider in race one earlier. Just rolled past us, getting everything ready. I think he took a tear off off as well. So, uh, and here's what happened earlier on. Here's highlights from race one then. And it was Jaren Monte starting from pole. Nicky Tooley got the whole shot into turn one, but it was soon Yari Montea who would take the lead back into turn five. Here is the eventual race winning move up the inside of the number 66. And although Tooley was trying his best to hold on to the tailpipes of the speed up in front of him, he wouldn't last long as we saw a great battle for the final podium position race between that man Medina. Lukas Tulovic and Zaccone there diving up the inside of the number three. Unfortunately for the number three and for the number 74, Bierschakowski, their races would end with crashes, but the number 61 made no mistake up the inside there, and he would have eventually beat the number five of Medina to first, but it was all about this man once again, Yari Montero, as he did in Estoril. He beat this man, Nicky Tooley to the top step there was Tulevic distraught after his crash but the, the, the green machine of the number 55 the Italian Yari Montea victorious in race one here can he do the business again in race two we'll soon find out as Zaccone as I mentioned before beating Medina to the final podium position that looks set to be a great battle There he is lifting the trophy. And there is the Autodromo Internacional de Algarve. 31 degrees air temperature, 41 degrees track temperature. It's safe to say it's pretty warm here in the Algarve. Yeah, it's certainly not letting up, not giving any of these riders any rest. This place is already physically demanding and mentally demanding and added on top of that with 31 degrees of ambient air temperature, it certainly means that the riders take a beating physically doing 17 laps around here. But they've done it once and they sure can do it again as we see them getting ready for the race, ready to go under their umbrellas, making sure they stay cool and also keeping the bike cool. Absolutely right, 31 degrees, you wanna be keeping as cool as possible. It's hot, but it won't be as hot as it will be in Jaref later this week for the MotoGP riders as we get set to welcome them back. But first up, here is Yari Montea. He has, well, it's safe to say dominated proceedings at the start of 2020. Three wins on the bounce. Two pole positions, although we did start the first race in Estoril from seventh, but made no mistake coming through to finish first there. And he's looking like a man really on a mission to take a double victory here. Yeah, it looks like he means business in 2020, of course. Looks as though he's take well, he has. He's taken a big step up from last year. Um, and it just seems as though he's, he's at that another level and uh, ready to, I'd say, move on to the, the World Championship stage. Nicky Tooley, second place on the grid again, you see there. <laughs> he's always cool, calm and collected, joking around. I think I'm that's sure. just him indicating there that he's going to try draft Monte and try and beat him, but we'll yeah. have to wait and find out. He's in good spirits though, Nicky Tooley. That's good to see. He's not too disheartened from three consecutive P2s. 
certainly not. I don't think he'd be too disheartened. Of course, this man is pretty mentally tough and physically tough. Last year, he had two really big injuries. Uh, I believe the first one was uh, he broke his leg, was it something? Yeah, so something like that. Took Mizano, he broke his femur and I think he did something to his wrist as well. That put him out for the season. Now, a big crash at Valencia as well in the European Moto 2 Championship. So, not the best of scenes for Nicky Tooley, but he's well and truly back in 2020. We should have mentioned that at the top of the show, Jack. Well done for bringing that up. Yeah. As we look at Lukas Tulovic, the man who unfortunately crashed out of race one. That was his second DNF in there after crashing out as well in the second race in Estoril. So he'll be making, well, he'll be wanting to make amends um, and try and challenge for the podium, which he was doing in the first race before he slipped off. Yeah, he certainly was. He, he was in that third place, just holding station behind the top two guys. And then uh, a couple of guys, Medina, got past him and uh, he, he regrouped, caught back up to them and then just unfortunately had a, a little a little slip off. Adam Norridan, he'll be looking to go a little bit better in the second race. Of course, finished fifth in the first one, so pretty good from him. He'll start from P4 again. Uh, and yeah, obviously, all the Malaysian fans out there will be supporting this man. Yeah, the, he spent three years in Moto3, best of fifth place in Argentina, as we mentioned earlier. So this is a sort of a confidence regathering for the for the Malaysian rider, rider in the Liqui Molly intact Sepang International Circuit junior team. Yeah, a bit of a mouthful, that one quite it a was, long wasn't team. It? <laughs> Alejandro Medina, of course. Not only doing this, but also MotoE, as we said earlier. He went pretty well in the first race. We saw him having that battle with Tulovic and Zaccone. Uh, of course, just came out behind Zaccone for the final spot on the podium. Hopefully, for his sake, he'll be looking to go one better, maybe even two better or three better. He is a racer after all, so he definitely believes that he'll be challenging for the top. Yeah, absolutely. That podium battle in the first race really was something to behold and it was eventually won by this man Alessandro De Coney he'll line up sixth again for race two fourth third and third so far in 2020 it's just popped up there so a very good start to his season he finished third last year um, so he'll well he'll be hoping he can penetrate the top two in the championship but at the minute of course, Jerry Montero and Nicky Tulli are occupying those positions there, look at, and they are looking like they're going to be difficult to beat. So if Zaccone can get another podium here, that stands him in good stead to have a have a month off the Moto2 bike. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, Zaccone, he, last year, of course, he was pretty good. As, his, as Elliot's just said, he was top three at the end of the year. Um, and with... You know, two, the two that finished ahead of him moving up to the World Championship, he probably presumed that he would be the one fighting for the wins, but it seems that others have taken a step up around, so we'll just have to see if he can take the same step. Here's Carter Luce. Uh, a little bit of a disappointing race for him, obviously. Finished down in 19th last time uh, after was it a slip-off, it was, wasn't it? I think so, yeah. Um, so, yeah, Carl Luce looking to regroup here. Starts from seventh, so pretty good position for him to try and get his hooks into the likes of Zaccone, Medina and Noradin and Tulovic as well and claw himself up to the fight for that podium place. Yeah, before Tulovic and Carl Luce crashed, we really did have a fantastic podium battle um, raging on between the likes of Tulovic and Carl Luce, Noradin, Medina, Zaccone and this man, Pierre Sikorsky, who also crashed in the first race. So if they all stay on board the machines, it looks like we've got a cracking race on our hands for the final podium positions if we assume that Monte and Tuli are going to be just that little bit ahead of these guys. Yeah, you'd imagine so. And uh, obviously the man we just saw on screen, Piotr Vesikersky, will be a little bit disappointed after slipping off in the first race. But uh, I fully expect him to to be around that fight for the top six, hopefully. You know, he was around there last time in Estoril. So... Uh, don't be surprised if you see him coming through from eighth on the grid and mixing it amongst those guys. Absolutely. And um, not quite sure if we're going to see Furman Aldeguer. Oh, yep, we are. Here he is. He's been super impressive, as we mentioned at the top of the programme. The stock 600 rider. Tenth, ninth and seventh overall. 
first in class in all of those races. So it's really been a very, very good season for the 15-year-old Spaniard moving up from the European Talent Cup, finished third in that championship with three times a second place. Yeah, it really has been very impressive. Anyways, we see all the mechanics start to leave the grid and very shortly we'll be looking at our starting grid. Here we go then, it's Jaren Monteo from Tuli and Tulevic on row one with row two, Noridin Medina and Zaccone. Row three, it's Carlos Bierczykowski and Al De Gea. Yeah, following up Al De Gea will be another Stock 600 rider, Alex Toledo from Tiger Harder, who came through at the end of that race, and Mattia Rato. Row five is Alessandro Zetti, Johan Diaz, and Sam Wilford, who got his first top 10 in the Moto 2 European Championship from Ishi Ishizuka, Super, and August. Kevin August, that is. Row seven will be Jake Archer from Leon August, August, and then 21st on the grid is Andreas Koffler. And row eight is Connor Funk. So let's see if the script will be the same as the first race. I'm looking forward to seeing if Tiger Harder can come through again. She had really great, great, great late race pace. I messed that one up last time I said it <laughs> as well. Um, so yeah, looking forward to see if he can come through. And also Furman Aldegur. He's gone better and better every single race he's done in this European Championship this year. Ten. Seventh. If he breaks into the top six, that will be outstanding. Yeah, it really will. And that's the two men you've just mentioned at the front actually leading down into turn one, I think. They'll be hoping they can do that in the race, but I don't think that will be quite possible. But you mentioned Fermin Aldegay. He was just off the podium battle, actually, in that first race. And to say he's mixing it with the Moto2 bikes, which you'd say have a little bit of an edge on the stock 600 bikes, was really, really impressive. And we can't speak highly enough of the 15-year-old tackling a super sock 600 bike around this circuit yeah it's crazy to think that he's come off the etc machine and he's on a stock 600 which is a 120 horsepower machine and 160 kilos as well and he's he's yeah he's taken to it like a doctor water he's been absolutely brilliant and certainly as 15 years old he's one to watch for the future conditions then perfect here in portamao track temperature rising slightly to 43 degrees that's a little bit on the warm side, but it shouldn't be too much of a problem for the Moto2 riders. And we saw in qualifying yesterday that actually most of the riders went better in Q2 than they did in Q1, so it obviously doesn't affect them too much. There's the championship standings. Montea, three wins out of three gives him 75 points. Tuli, two wins, uh, three second places gives him 60 points. And then there's Zaccone, the third place man in race one in third, and Medina in fourth. So it is that man who they've got to beat in the championship and is that man who they've got to beat around this Algarve racetrack. Yep, he's looking like he's going to set the bar again, is Yari Montea. We saw him, we actually stood there on the inside of the final corner yesterday and he was so impressive how he was able to just hug the bike to the white line on the inside and just keep it pinned. He was extremely impressive as he just flies past our commentary box window, doing a few little stoppies, making sure he's got all the temperature he needs in those big front brakes. Ready to go for the final race of the day. The red flag signals as Thule rolls up into P2. Can he get the whole shot? And more importantly, if he does get the whole shot, how long can he hold Monte behind him? That's going to be important. Tulevich will want to be having a good start from third on the grid. But there he is, looking calm, cool and collective. Is the number 55 as we get ready to go racing. The green flag waves. The red flag clears. The lights are about to go on. And we are... Racing again in Moto2 here in Portimao. It looks like a good launch from Nicky Tuli from the middle of the front row. Looks like to me he's got the better of Yari Montea, but let's see who breaks later. Is Tulevich going to make it with inside? No, he's not. Montea really good on the brakes around the outside, and he takes the whole shot. Bad news for Tuli and the others then. Can Montea clear off like he has done in the first race? Tuli grabs second place off Tulevich as he now sets his sights on chasing Montea. 
Yeah, Tuli's really got to get after it now. He's already about three or four bike lengths, and we know that Montea is so fast here today. So Tuli, he's got to push on if he wants any chance of stopping the young Italian, the number 55 on the speed up from breaking away and taking this win in the second race. We look back and see Tulevic and Medina. Those two went at it with each other in the first race with Tulevic just holding up possibly the, the, the fourth place rider in uh, the first few laps of the last race. So let's see if Tulevic can uh, try and keep up with the top two this time in the early laps. This is exactly what Tuli did not want. Monteo has got a clear track in front of him. He's now allowed to get into his rhythm. Tuli's just off the back of him. He's not going to be able to get much slipstream from there. And with 16 and a half laps to go, is it race over already? Let's not call it quite this early, but it's looking ominous again for Yaro Monteo. He broke latest down in turn one. And, and now he's like... leading. So there's Zaccone then. He's just gone up the inside of Alan Norrin, who's slightly wide. Zaccone. Or was it Medina was slightly wide? No, it was no. it was Adam Norrin. So Zaccone's now up into fifth place, I think that is. Yeah, it looks like it. Adam Norridan looks like he's lost two places on this opening lap, down to sixth as they complete the first lap. Look, there's your man, the one who's leading the way, number 55, Yari Montea. Just looking back down the order, Tiger Harder looks to have made a much better start. So his late rate pace will certainly come in and we could see him fight well, I'd say for the top four positions, hopefully. Just behind him is Piotr Bishikurski. He's looking to make up for his little tip off in race one. And he's pretty quick late in the race as well. So watch those two coming through. So the gap over the line at the front to Thule from Montea was 0.5 seconds, half a second in it at the front. So let's see how that evolves as Tulevich again holds third like he did in race one before he unfortunately crashed out from Medina and Zaccone. So that's the same battle we saw earlier on this morning with Adam Norodin just off the back of those. There's Bershikurski in harder, like you say, Jack. He's made a good start. He's up into seventh. So if he can keep this pace up and then use his superiority in the last quarter of the race, then he's on for a good position. Yeah, he certainly is. Just looking down the timing screens, Elliot. It looks like Fermin Aldeguer hasn't made the best start. He's gone backwards from ninth on the grid down to 11th, just in front of Sam Wilford on the IDW Racing Calex. Just in front of Fermin Aldeguer is actually Alex Toledo, his stock 600 competitor. So he's leading the way for that class for first time today, I presume. I think so, yeah, because Aldeguer definitely got a good start in race one. Um, so it'll be interesting battle that to see if Toledo can get the better of Alder gear. But at the front then it's the top two clearing away as they did in race one and as they have done throughout 2020 so far with Tulevic, with Zaccone and Medina in company as they come round to complete lap two here. Let's watch the gap at the front to see what it is between Tuli and Monte. Tuli looks like he's had a good lap to me. Let's have a look what it is over the line. He looks like he's not edged out as... Um, as Montea and in fact Thule sets the fastest lap of the race and he closes in by 10th but let's not get too carried away because we saw this in the opening race but has Thule made some decent changes to that bike that's going to allow him to race with Montea it certainly looks like it in the opening few laps let's keep our fingers crossed yeah it looks as though it could be a little bit of a spicy situation out front if Thule is able to close that four tenth gap back on Montea just one thing to point out Thule's lap that he did the fastest lap of the race last time round was a 146.5 in the first part of the first race. Montea actually did a 46 flat. So it shows you that the track is running a little bit slower. That track temperature's just gone up as we reach 20 past two local time. And it's starting to become a little bit greasy. Yeah, it's important for these riders not to push too much on the opening laps because they're gonna want some rubber left for the end of the race as we see confirmation there of Thule's 146.578. And he's not letting Montea go easily this time around as we come down through turn 11, down the hill through 13, and they'll be up to turn 13 in no time as Zaccone is edging away from the number three of Lukas Tulevic. Good ride coming in from the promo racing rider. He's looking for his second podium here, and who we're looking at the number 44. Kevin Orgies. Wonder what's happened to the yeah. German rider. Has he had a tip off somewhere? Yeah, it looks as though he seems to be going okay. So possibly just a little run on in the gravel or maybe a tip off somewhere. We'll, we'll have to find out more. Maybe we'll get a replay. But uh, anyway, back to the front guys. And it looks as though is that 
I'm not too sure. We just look away now. Here we go. We go back to the front. And look at that. There's absolutely nothing between them. I think Tuli's actually going to go for a move down into turn one. No, he backs out of it a little bit early. You see the rear end kicking out as he drops over the top of the crest down into turn one. one Zaccone, turn. Sorry. Sorry. Zaccone is gapped. Tulovic for third. So we'll see what Zaccone can do, whether he's got the pace to keep up with these guys. Yeah, sorry, Jack. I was just going to say that Montea is superb on the brakes down into turn one. Tuli, I think, broke where he normally would break, but Montea was just that a little bit further down the road and he's still got it made to the apex so but this is good from Thule he's closer than he was in race one is Montea just preserving his tyres a little bit we'll have to wait and see the hotter temperatures are going to have a little bit of a, a little bit of an effect yeah, as Alessandro Picconi is 2.2 off these riders so it's really this for the battle for the race win yeah and you're dead right about uh Montea being really good on the brakes, Elliot. Yeah, we saw it all day. We've seen it yesterday as well. But now we're seeing it again in race two. So it looks like he's just got a bit, in a bit, a bit of an advantage. I'll put my teeth in. In the <laughs> middle sector does Montea. It looks like he just edges two or three tenths on Thule. But then Thule over the line, as we saw last time around, was right in the slipstream so I don't know whether Tuli's got a little bit of an advantage as we see the two teammates battling out that's Card Luce and Bishikursky yeah Bishikursky making progress he actually dispatched of Tiger Harder and now he's dispatched of Chavi Card Luce his team stylo bike teammate so it looks as though he's got early race pace and Tiger Harder possibly not but as we saw in the first race do not count him out yeah the number 74 will be determined to make up for his crash in race one Right then, focus on the leaders. What was it over the line? It was two temps, so that's nothing between them again. So like I said, I think Thule has a little bit of an advantage in the last sector, whereas Montea's strength is through the middle sector and possibly the first sector. So we'll keep an eye on that. Yeah, well, we've got a race on our hands here. Yeah, we do. It definitely seems to be as well, Elliot. Just uh, reinstating what you just said there about Thule being strong in the last split. He was four temps quicker on that last lap. One person I'm actually quite impressed with here is uh, Alessandro Zaccone. As soon as he's got through on Medina and Tulovic into third place, his lap times have picked up and he's only lapping about a tenth or two off the top guys. And he's pulling away from fourth and fifth Medina and Tulovic. Yeah, impressive from Zaccone this. He's not letting Medina have the battle that they had in the first race. So yeah, like you say, Jack, very impressive from Zaccone as the two leaders rise up over the hill great styles from both of them as they go through the very quick left-hander in a hard-breaking zone into the right-hander of turn 11 before they drop back down into 12 and they'll be up to 13 through the left-hander and this is where Thule begins to make up ground again after Montea just slightly edges out in that middle sector so let's see he's, quick, he's pretty close here Jack I think I'm not sure what corner he does make up his vantage on but there's obviously somewhere I think was that a little bit wide from Montea? No, oh. and oh no. It's the number seven of Adam Noridin. After his fifth place finish in race one, he's not going to finish race two, unfortunately, for the Malaysian. Yeah, that's a shame for Adam Noridin. Looked as though he'd really made a step this weekend, getting used to the CEV Motor 2 class. And uh, yeah, big shame for him, but hopefully he'll roll on to Jerez at the end of August and come back a little bit stronger than before. Anyway, back to the front. Thule, yeah, as you say, Elliot, it does look as though he's looking better in this race. He set the fastest lap again. They picked their pace up, actually. They were back to all the way down to about 46.8, and now the pair of them were both in a 46.5 that time round, with Thule setting the fastest lap of the race. I'm sure it'll flash up on your screens at some point. There we go, just as I queued it. Lovely stuff. <laughs> It's great when things work out perfectly, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, like a plan, eh? Absolutely. <laughs> it will be interesting to see if Thule has found something or is it Montea just conserving his tyres? I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt to Thule because he's riding really, really well. And obviously he'll have gone back to his team after the first race and said, we need to find something if we're going to close down Montea because that's three races in a row that he's beaten us fair and square. But Thule's making the ends here in race to import them out. Yeah, and of course, and it's not just the fact of like actually physically beating Montea that Thule needs to do, but mentally he's got to get it into him that he can beat 
Montea, and he's really putting an effort in now. However, saying that, he has dropped a couple of tenths off in this lap. First split, he was two and a half tenths back. In the second one, he was a tenth back. So Montea might just be digging in and putting in them fast lap times. We'll have a look next time they come across the line. Here's the Coney then in a, a little bit of a lonely third place, but he can't relax too much because Medina is pushing. It'll be interesting to see what the lap time is. I think they're doing pretty similar times according to our time on the screen. So Medina, well, they were locked together in the first race, so they've obviously got a very similar pace. So I think Medina's just lost out in the opening few laps if he's going to challenge for the podium, but we'll wait and see. There's number five dipping down his cell on breaking hard. And Lucas Tulovic, as we can see on our timing screens, has just lost a place to Peter Bierzkowski. I'm sure, yep, there he is. And yeah, Carl has got Tulovic as well, so I wonder, what, I wonder what's happened to the number three. Yeah, it seems to be a similar story to the first race, really. Tulovic was kind of strong in the... Well, I say kind of strong, he was strong in the first couple of laps, but then after that, it just seemed that as everyone set into a rhythm, he was just a couple of attempts off the back of that. We'll have to see he, if he can do the same and regroup and come back through them again. Just in that long shot we saw as well, you saw Tiger Harder on the AGR team bike, the number 23. He's just ahead of Fermin Adiger and Alex Toledo on the stock 600s. So we know that Tiger Hard is quick late in the race. So I wonder if he can just drag Fermin Adiger and Alex Toledo through and up into kind of the top seven or eight positions. Yeah, that will be interesting. We just saw there as they rose over the top of the hill, Tulovic took a long look behind him and he was going to get a face full of Tiger Harder and the two stock 600 riders of Fermin Adiger who has got the better of Alex Toledo. And there's Peter Bershkowski in fifth place. Great ride from him, and he really is making amends for his crash in race one, the number 74 Polish rider. Xavi Kardelus will be hoping he can tag onto the back of him, and maybe they can attack Alejandro Medina for P4. Yeah, Bershkowski's got a little bit of free real estate now to catch back up to Alejandro and Medina, and sometimes that is one of the hardest or easiest of things depending on how far that gap is to the guy in front of you, whether you're able to just cling on to them and get dragged up to the back of them or just lose sight. He's got about, so it's around two and a half seconds, so maybe he's just on the cusp of that gap where he can see him ahead and it just brings him up closer to him. Back to the front, and it looks as though Montea, yeah, there we go, fastest lap of the race for Montea. Three and a half tenths quicker than Tuli that last time around. Yeah, fastest lap of the race for Monte. It looks like he's just trying to pull the pin now. Our predictions earlier of whether he was preserving the tyres might be starting to come to the fore. We'll be interested to see what this lap is because if he does start reeling off those mid to low 146s, then I don't think Thule's going to have an answer. I say low 46s, but he was in the 45s at my mistake. Well, I think that was wrong, actually, so I wasn't... Yeah, he was uh, actually doing a 46.4 that lap time round. The small graphic on the TV just showed the wrong lap time there. But anyway, the main point to take home is that Montea, it looks like he's, though he's on the charge. He's got the full gas and he's pulling away from Thule here. So there's the standings as we run with nine and a quarter laps to go. Montea and Thule up top. And then there's a four second back, back from this man, the number 66 to Zaccone and Zaccone has got a 1.5 second buffer to Medina that's much more comfortable than it was in race one for the number 61 there he is coming around the corner and there's the number five of Medina so this will be another good ride for that man the number 61 the Italian before he goes into or well, he drives down to Jerez for the FIM and all Motor Wii World Cup along with Medina behind him, so I wonder if they'll have a nice little battle in ref as they were today. I'm sure they will do. We saw in uh, Motor Wii pre-season testing, if you can remember back that far, that all the times were pretty close, actually. It was looking really competitive. A lot of new guys coming through with other guys like Domi Agata stepping back from the Moto 2 Class 2 Moto E for 2020. So Moto E is only getting stronger. Yeah, do make sure you tune into that this weekend, along with, obviously, the Moto GP World Championship, but just concentrating our thoughts back here and you can see the lap times are pretty much identical between the two riders. Medina not really making inroads into the number 61. It's just hovering around 1.5 seconds between them. And like I said before, 
They both had really similar pace in race one. So with Medina just 1.5 seconds off, it's going to be unlikely unless this man, the number 61, Zaccone, runs into some sort of tyre trouble, which is every possibility in this heat. As we refer back to the leaders, and it's Montea now streaming clear. 1.5 seconds it is at the start of this lap. I think it will be a little bit more. Yeah, in sector one, it was half a second quicker, which it, quicker, which is a substantial amount in one sector. Yeah, it really is. And uh, just looking at the timing screens, Elliot, looks like we've got a Tiger Harder alert. He's just kicked into life. He's put his fastest lap in on the previous lap, a whole half a second quicker than Tulovic in front of him. And then he's gone and done his PB first sector. So it seems as though that late race pace, got it right that time, has just kicked in with nine laps to go. Yeah, I think we're going to see Tiger Harder move up the standings in a short while. Tulovic doesn't seem to quite have the pace to stick with the top six, which is unfortunate number four for the number three rider. And how far back is firm in Alder Gea. Well, there's your answer. He's right behind Tiger Hard and Lukas Tulovic with Alex Toledo on the other stock six on your bike. Just losing touch slightly. He's just over two seconds behind Fermin Alder Gea. So it looks like Fermin Alder Gea is again going to take that crown if all being well. And if he can beat Lukas Tulovic and Tiger Harder on the stock six, we've never seen them. I mean, we've sang his praises enough uh, today, Jack, but this really is impressive. Yeah, it really is. Just 15 years old. I know we've told you before, but we'll tell you again. Watch out for him in the future. These two swapped places on the last lap. Xavi Carlos and Piotr Bishikersky. It seemed as though when Bishikersky came through on his teammate, it just kicked Carlos into life. So he's revived himself and he's moving forward again. Here's the battle we were just mentioning between Tulovic, Harder and Fermin Gea. Looks like Tulovic has been reeled in and there is the number 54 of Aldegar, the 15 year old really is something to behold can he get the better of these two riders, if he can tag onto the back of Harder who's got late race pace like we've mentioned numerous times then he could be on for another very very good finish and he's looking very comfortable at the back of those two and are they closing in on the two team Stylo bike rides in front of them. Let's have a look at the gap when they come over the line, but I think it's fairly similar pace, just like it is between Medina and Zaccone. It's just that gap where they're not quite close enough to get into the slipstream, but they're just far behind to have them in their sights. Yeah, Fermin Aldegui is actually setting a really good pace at the minute. The last lap round, he, he was uh, the only one of that battle in the 47s. This time, he's just dipped back into the 48s, probably because he's caught the back of them. As we just see, Tiger Harder moves his way through on Lukas Tulovic, so he's punted Tulovic out of the way at Turn 1. And we'll see if oh, we just run a little bit wide, so Aldegui might get the drive. Yes, he does. He's through on, at Turn 3, up into... Uh, that will be P8, eighth place. Yeah, Tulovic dropping down to P9 from P7 in a matter of two corners, so not the result the number three would have wanted, but Tiger Harder and Furman out again march on, and now they've got Peter Bersikirsky in their sights, who's just losing touch a little bit with Xavi Cardloose, like we just touched on. But there he is, the rider who finished third in the European Talent Cup last year. He's been first in class in all three races so far. Yeah, he's looking to repeat that feat again and take another Moto2 scalp along the way. Yeah, he really has been the benchmark for the Stock 6 boys, as we just see him carrying a fair bit of corner speed into Turn 11 as it, before they drop down the hill. Got a little bit of a wiggle on the rear coming out, so tyres just starting to come into it. Of course, these Moto2 uh, bikes, they do go through their tyres pretty quickly if you're not too careful. A fair bit quicker than the Moto3 boys and the ETC guys that we see earlier with their less power. So what's the main difference then between the Moto2 and the Stock 600? Your we're used to working on bikes in the British Superbike Paddock, Jack. What's the what's the main difference between the two? Because they're pretty similar yeah, in terms well, of pace. The, yeah, they're pretty similar in terms of pace. The engines are fairly similar. Of course, Audi is running a Yamaha R6, so it's a stock 600cc engine. And the Moto 2 class also runs stock 600cc engines, but they're Hondas. So not a lot of difference in terms of engine, but the chassis is the main thing. Of course, these Moto 2 bikes are all 
prototype frames, whether it's a Calex, a Speed Up, or a Suta, and generally just the chassis are a little bit stiffer, uh, and that generally allows them to go a little bit faster in lap times. They can push the bikes a bit harder. Expertly said by Jack Gorst. Yeah, I'd hardly say expert. My dad at home will probably be critiquing everything I'm saying. But anyway, <laughs> let's hope I got it right. Yeah, you did better than me. But yeah, you, the Moto2 bike, just from the naked eye, just a little bit, a little bit fatter, let's say, than the uh, the stock 600 bike. And talking of the Moto2 bike, here's a rider on the Moto2 bike. It is Yari Monteiro, who now holds a 2.5 second lead over Nicky Tooley, and it looks like he is well on his way to victory number four in a row. What a start to 2020. This is for the number 55, if he can keep it upright, which I'm sure he will. I hope, hopefully I've not just cursed him. <laughs> yeah, hopefully not. He didn't seem to in the first race, Elliot, so I think we'll be all right. But yeah, as you say, he has been imperious. 75 out of 75 points so far. This man, 60 points for those three second places. I'm sure by now he's getting I wouldn't say frustrated, but just starting to wonder how he's going to be able to beat this man, Montea, hopefully in a ref, a circuit that these guys know a little bit better, particularly um, Nicky Tooley with his experience of World Championship in both Moto 2 and World Super Sport. It's a bit of a happier hunting ground for him. Yeah, these two really have been the stars of the show so far, and you just think. Obviously, Tuli's got Moto E duty with the IO team in between now and the next FIM CV Repsol round in Jerez at the end of July. So I think whenever he can, he'll be hoping he and the team can get together and try and work out what they can improve to try and match that man because he's really taken a step up this year as the number 55. Yeah, 2.9 seconds ahead of Tuli. And you've got to say, it's, it's even more impressive when you consider the last six months we've had. Of course, these guys spent a lot of time not racing their usual race bikes, their Moto2 machines or Stock 600, whatever it may be. They spent a lot of time at home, a lot of time on the cross trainer, doing Zwift rides just to stay fit before they could then return to training on their respective racing motorcycles. So to take that step and not fall backwards from his level from last year after such a long time off the bike is even more impressive. Yeah, it's a very good point actually, Jack, that you that you make. It's been a well yeah, it's been around four months since they were competitively racing and obviously they had Estoril to bed themselves in last week, but he really has hit the ground running as Yari Montea. Like we've mentioned before, he was he showed glimpses of what he can do in the 2019 season, but finished seventh overall there. So it really is something to behold of what he's performing at this level. The team wave, the team wave him on. Goes down there again, a little bit out of shape, but that'll be nothing to worry about. Tooley drops down into turn one as well. Just passes the back marker, number 97. It's Connor Funk, the American. Yeah, he's having a, a difficult weekend, but good to see him getting out of the way of the top guys as they come through. Looking back down the order, it looks as though Tiger Harder isn't making any more inroads. Perhaps I've jinxed him with that late race pace. I do apologize, Tiger. Um, but yeah, he's, he's still got Fermin Aldeguer just behind him, only four tenths behind him. So those two having a good battle for seventh and eighth place. Yeah, the Tigers hunt on Peter Berskirsi looks like it's dwindling slightly in the latter stages, but we'll keep a close eye on how he can do as we focus back in on your race leader. And he's got three and a half laps to go. He can enjoy these last three and a half laps around this magnificent circuit. Yeah, you just heard the bike screaming there going through the bottom of turn nine. They sound absolutely mint, these little 600s, of course, different from what we run in the Moto2 World Championship with the 675 Triumphs, the three-cylinder machines. These are just your slow-mo poetry in motion. Keeping the front end down, I'm sure, using the rear brake as well. And then through this section that we just said. Yeah, both these and the Triumphs of the Moto2 World Championship use sound absolutely beautiful. I think I prefer slightly the Triumph sound, but the Honda 600 certainly is music to the ears as well as we cross the line, or about to cross the line, with three laps to go. Yari Montea looks like he's going to make it four out of four, with Nicky Tooley pushing on 
to pick up any pieces if Montea makes a mistake in second, but it's a pretty lonely ride for the man in first and the man in second. It's also a pretty lonely ride for your man in third, Alessandro Zaccone. He's two and a half seconds clear of Alejandro Medina, so it looks like Medina can't quite challenge Zaccone for the last step on the rostrum as they did in race one. Yeah, and it's just been made aware to me that uh, Connor Funk, actually, we just saw getting out of the way of the leading guys. He's riding for the Nikos team. We've stepped up from Moto3 last year, so big challenge for them coming to a circuit with a new bike and no data. So that's possibly explaining why Connor is just at the back of the field today. Further down, we've got Tiger Harder, Fermin Aldegay, Lucas Tulovic and Alex Toledo rounding out the top 10 with Sam Wilford. 10 seconds off Toledo in 11th, so unless someone crashes the Brit, doesn't look like he's going to repeat his top 10 in race one, but then there's still a solid ride from the number 35 as we saw Alessandro Lacconi get in. Yeah, Lacconi, uh, not Registered Lacconi. <laughs> That's a throwback. Yeah, that is. Zaccone, that one. <laughs> um, yeah, he just had a, a bit of a moment where he actually went over track limits at the top uh, of turn seven, I believe it was, and then came back down through turn nine, getting it all lit up and sideways. Sensational riding. Still pushing on then is Sakoni. And we've not mentioned track limits really today, Jack. There's not actually been that many off-track excursions and track limits that we've had to look out for, but it is a thing if they run onto the green bits that you see on the edge of most corners, if they do it too often, then they will get either a time penalty or they'll get given a long lap penalty, but they've been sticking to the rules today of the, the Moto2 riders, the Moto3 riders and the European Talent Cup riders, so we've not really had to mention it. As we see Montea passing another back marker on his way to what looks set to be another victory as he storms his way round the Algarve circuit and it really has been a perfect weekend and a perfect week really even six days ago the riders were in Estoril they've traveled down the coast here in Portugal to Portimao and Montea's doing the business once more yeah he really is and just looking further down the order to see what's happening with the lower places and Sam Wilford is actually closing in on 10th place Alex Toledo of course Wilford the big bad Wilf as he's known uh, he got his first top 10 in this category just a few hours earlier, so he's chasing a second one as we look back to Montea again. So 100 points, well, 25 points, which will take him to 100 points, awaits the young Italian, and he really does deserve them. He's been absolutely sensational all weekend and all last weekend as well in Estoril. Yeah, I'll be on it. A ton of points will Yari Montea and He'll get set for a month off the Moto2 bike and he can head back to where he resides and just reflect on the perfect opening two rounds of 2020 and obviously he'll continue training and he'll be looking to get to Jaref in just over a month's time. Well, a month and a half's time and repeat the feat there. Yeah, I'm sure he'll certainly be hoping for that. Just do a quick rundown of your top 10 as we come into the final lap. It is Montea from Thule from Zaccone. Medina still sits in fourth with Cardaloose of some ways back from him, about five or six seconds or so. Bishikursky, pull that one again. Bishikursky is just back from him with Tiger Harder and Alvin Fudegu in seventh and eighth. Tulovic is settled in ninth. It doesn't look as though anyone's going to trouble him. And Alex Toledo on the second stock 600 machine in this race in 10th. So that's your top 10 then, but they're all chasing this man, the number 55 on the Team Chatty speed up, Yari Montea. Let's follow him, follow him round this last lap here in Portsmouth. We'll switch back to the man in second place, Nicky Tooley. Don't take any, anything away from him. He's This will be his fourth second row in a row. I'm sure he wants to stand on the top step, but if he can't win, then second place is your best bet. Down the hill then for the last time. Gary Montea here at Portimao, he'll swing left, he'll break hard and then he'll swing tighter left before coming into the last sector and then he'll round the long sweeping right-hander of turn 15. This is turn 14, safely negotiated for the Team Chiatti speed-up rider. They'll open the gas. 
He'll be enjoying it now around turn 15, the long right-hander. And he will come across the line to take his fourth victory of the season, his fourth victory in a row. It's another perfect weekend for Yari Montea, the number 55. What a ride from the Italian. Tuli takes second. He'll be disheartened to see the number 55 win again. And then Zaccone takes third and it's your same podium than it was in race one in the European Moto2 Championship. There's Medina looking a little bit distressed with another P4. Yeah, Cardaluce comes across the line in fifth ahead of his Stylo bike teammate, Peter Bishkirski. He'll be happy enough with that P6 after crashing out of race one. Tiger Harder didn't quite have the same late race pace as he had in the first race, but still comes through to seventh. Fermin Aldega, a massive round of applause to that young man. Eighth place again, so that's four top tens for the Stock 600 rider in 2020. Lucas Tulovic in ninth, slightly disappointing, maybe struggling with the higher track temperatures, and Alex Toledo in tenth. I'm just seeing your double race winner and your double second place man shaking hands. Plenty of respect between the two riders. And they've both put on a show here today in Portimao. Unfortunately for that man, Tuli wasn't able to keep up with that man, the number 55 of Yari Montea, but Tuli still celebrates with a nice wheelie down the hill as they'll come round. Enjoy the last part of the Portamount circuit. There's Zaccone enjoying it. He will be happy with his day's work. Two third places for the Italian. Job well done for him. He'll now get set, as we said, to travel down to Jerez as he takes on the Moto E World Cup with Trentino Grissini as reigning champion. Matteo Ferrari is his teammate, so that's a challenge Zaccone will be looking forward to. There's the man we've talked about quite a lot today, Fermin Aldegay. He's your stock 600 class winner for the fourth time in a row. He finished eighth. So yeah, a cracking ride from the number 54 Spaniard as Monteo rolls into pit lane, rolls into Park Ferme, gets a big slap on the back from one of his speed ups mechanic and it's a job well done. For the number 55, the number 66 looks a little bit crestfallen with another second place as you can imagine it's not great to see your main rival winning all four of the opening races but as we said if you can't finish first then you're best to take second go home and try and think where can we find the improvements to battle with Montea because it's looking ominous in the championship try and listen in to see if we can hear anything from Thule there just Thule but nevertheless he's still second in the championship Just looks cool, calm and relaxed as he did on the grid. He's come here and done a fantastic job. And there we see him celebrating over the line. Pointing to his team, standing up. And they'll enjoy Sunday evening. Monday evening, sorry. Remember racing on a Monday, not a Sunday. Takes some getting used to. And there's a classic Portimao shot of the riders wheeling down the hill just before they get to the Craig Jones corner. I'll soon be hearing from your race winner, Yari Monte. He'll be speaking to Jack Gorse for the second time 
today. And it's been a great day of racing, hasn't it? The perfect appetizer for what's coming up this weekend. The MotoGP World Championship returns the eagerly awaited. I'm sure everyone at home, just as we are here, is absolutely buzzing to kick things off. Finally, in 2020, with the Premier Class, of course, the Moto2 and Moto3 riders were able to get races, the race done in Qatar. But there we see Yari Montea heading over to speak to Jack Gorse down there. Surely, if he continues this, we'll be seeing him on the world stage in 2021. But here we go, then. Let's have a listen to what he has to say. Gary Monteo, 100 points out of 100 is a great start to your 2020 time championship. Yeah, great start. Uh, in, in the second race, uh, I, I did a great start. I think the, the, um, the more better than, uh, than I, uh, before. And uh, I'm really, really happy. The, the, the race was, uh, was so, so difficult. Because uh, it's hot, and uh, um, with, the, with the bike, with the front, uh, I had a little problem. But uh, I'm really happy because uh, I win again uh, here in uh, Portimao. And in Italian, please? Sì, ho fatto una buona partenza, forse una delle migliori, una delle migliori. E sono molto contento. La gara è stata veramente dura perché. Fa, fa molto caldo e anche con la, con la moto con l'anteriore avevo un po' di problemi però a parte questo abbiamo cercato comunque di portare a casa il risultato e vincere qui a Portimao mi fa, mi fa piacere quindi speriamo di continuare così congratulations thank you there he is Daniel Montea heading towards his second rostrum of the day his second win of the day and here's some of the highlights from what just happened, it was the pole sitter Monteo who led into turn one. And that was about your lot. Tuli did drag him back in though. He didn't have it all his own way in the opening exchanges. With Lucas Tulevich holding third for a little while off the front row. But Monteo and Tuli soon broke clear of this gaggle of riders. Behind us, Zucconi soon made his way into the final rostrum position and he made it his own by just edging out a good second and a half on Medina. Norodin's race unfortunately came to an early end in race two as we saw Tulovic pressurizing the number 55. And as I mentioned, the number 61 is Zucconi making third place his own in race two. That man Medina not quite able to stick with him just like he did in race one with Peter Berzikowski making up for his crash in race one. But it was all about this man again, Yari Montea. Was he conserving his tires at the start of the race? Who knows, he said it was a tough race, but he made it look easy as he crossed the line. 4.8 seconds ahead of Thule in the end to take another race win, and that's four from four in the 2020 Moto2 European Championship. Here are the results then from race two, and it was Monteo and Tuli Zucconi on the podium, the same as it was in race one. Medina picks up his second consecutive fourth with Carlos Bierczykowski, Tiger Harder, Fermin Aldegea, and Lucas Tulovic rounding out the top nine. Alex Toledo was 10th ahead of Sam Wilford, who finished 11th on the Calix machine. Matteo Reto, Takeshi Isuzuka, Alessandro Zetti, Nicholas Saiba, Jack, uh, Jake Archer, sorry, not Jack Archer, Leon August, Andreas Koffler, and Yuan Dier. All your finishers with Kevin August, Connor Funker lap down, and Adam Norodin, unfortunately, not being able to finish. Yeah, one thing I noticed there, Elliot, just when I was walking back through, just inside that building there, you can see in shot, 
Uh, Nikki Tuli was hunkered down behind the podium in the shade, and Alessandra Zaccone was inside, sat down in the shade as well. So obviously, pretty hot and sticky race out there for them. And uh, Montea saying as well that the one big thing that was difficult was the heat. Yeah, completely insane. I'd rather them than me because it pushing 32 degrees here in Portimao and I wouldn't fancy wrestling a Moto2 bike around this tricky circuit as the speed up team lift up another winner's trophy they've got four this year perfect start for them Fermin Aldegaer yeah big hand to Fermin Aldegaer and Alex Toledo as well really good performances on the stock 600 machines here here we go then. Yari Montella. Yari Montella. The Repsol free full check to the winner, Yari Montella. I love it when other people and do work for you. It's great, isn't it? <laughs> Yari Montella getting the check. He's points then for Montea in 2020. Well, I'm pretty sure that sets him as the man that everyone's going to have their sights on heading to Jerez at the end of August. Um, yeah, Imperius, can't really say too much more about him. Nicky Tooley needs to find something else to late in the race, because early in the race, he's really, really strong and fast. And then it's just that last 10 laps where Montea just pulls away. Here's your championship standings then after four races. It's Yari Monte on 100 points with Nikatuli on 80. Zaccone not too far behind on 61 with Medina on 49. Tiger Harder, Javi Carlos, Peter Bierskirski, Fermin Aldegea, eighth place there. And Adam Norodin in ninth. You can see at the bottom of the screens there, that's when we'll be back in the FIM CV Repsol 2020 Championship. Just run through your top. Well, the others, Lucas Tulovic, Alex Toledo, Matteo Ratto, Sam Wilford, Takeshi Suzuka, Alessandro Zetti, Johan Diaz, Kevin August. And then we have Nicholas Cyber and Leon August completing the 19 riders. Like I say, the Circuito de Jerez and Hel Nieto who plays host to round one or round two of the MotoGP World Championship this weekend also plays host to round three of the FIMC V Repsol 2020 season. What a day it's been for that man, Nieri Monte. What, it's, what a day it's been for racing as we get set for MotoGP race week. We hope you've enjoyed it. Me and Jack Gorst will be back in Jerez for two race days. So that's double the fun. That's a classic circuit where that man will be hoping he can do the business once more. Thank you all for tuning in and watching. We hope you've enjoyed it. We'll see you again in Jerez. And we hope you enjoy the MotoGP World Championship this weekend where you can watch everything live and on demand on Video Pass. See you soon. See ya.